Tonight we ask, is APD backing off when it comes to pulling over drunk drivers and are more people dying because of it? Our four investigates team spent months looking at all the data and tonight four investigator Jen French shows you what she found. Looking back to 2009, New Mexico's largest law enforcement agency was very aggressive. But in 2010, DWI citations took a nosedive, and families in our community are suffering because of it. How many times are you going to get away with something before you get caught? The scars hide the metal underneath Vanessa Cogdill's skin. Titanium plate, three pins, and seven screws. Vanessa and her boyfriend were on their motorcycle when police say a drunk teenager hit them. She couldn't walk for months. I was just a raw chicken leg. Vanessa's situation is the reality for too many victims of drunk drivers. Because this kid forever altered everything of my life. Everything. People like Vanessa deserve to know that police are working to stop DWI offenders. We looked at state court data dating back to 2005, and what we found was alarming. From 2005 to 2009, law enforcement in Bernalillo County was consistently writing about the same number of DWI citations. But beginning in 2010, look at what happens. The numbers take a nosedive. By 2016, officers wrote nearly 60% fewer DWI tickets. Um, as for the numbers, I couldn't give you a reason why they, they've decreased. We couldn't help but notice the drop in DWI tickets looks a lot like this graph of APD staffing over the same time period. Fewer officers, fewer DWI citations. Additionally, on APD's own website, a published staffing plan shows the department needs to hire 17 more DWI officers and hire four more DWI supervisors. We asked APD officer Darren Diaguero if APD's officer shortage is contributing to the problem. Do you feel like we have enough officers on the road right now? Well, like I said, we will always want more officers, always. Um, but right now, like I said, we're not doing less enforcement than the previous years. This isn't just about writing tickets, it's about saving lives. So we took a look at just how many people died from alcohol-related crashes over the same time period. From 2005 to 2011, the number went down until 2012. Then look, it starts to climb a 48% increase in deaths. Why are there more fatalities now in the county? That's a good question. If we knew that answer, we'd be able to prevent a lot of this. So at the same time that fewer people got caught for drinking and driving, more people died. And while those numbers were shifting in a dangerous direction, leadership was changing at City Hall. We couldn't get clear answers from Officer Diaguero, but we know you and people like Vanessa deserve them. So we put our questions directly to Albuquerque Mayor Richard Berry. Are there any concerns about the officer shortage maybe contributing to fewer pullovers? Well, we had, you know, we had um, 32 stops, I think, the year before last. I mean, these are rough numbers, okay? And then we had in the high 20s last year, I think. So we have the capability of putting these DWI checkpoints together. Wait, let's hear that again. Well, we had, you know, we had um, 32 stops, I think, the year before last. I mean, these are rough numbers, okay? And then we had in the high 20s last year. The mayor admits there were fewer checkpoints last year than two years ago. To, to the families who've lost loved ones in recent years, um, how do you explain the recent phenomena of deaths going up to them? I think there's, a, I think there's a, you know, some people, you know, a lot of people are getting the message and some people aren't. And when they don't get the message, it's horrific. The reality of the fewer officers on the road is horrific for people like Vanessa. Because those days are numbered. Stories like Vanessa's are a reminder of the price people pay when people drink and get behind the wheel. Yeah, it's on his record. Yeah, he made the choice. Yeah, that's his mistake and he has to live with that too. And maybe emotionally he has his scars, but physically, mentally, emotionally, I have mine. Scars that can't be erased. You don't know until it happens to you. Jen French for Investigates.